What is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another YouTube video. We have another interview for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. So leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new if you want more Dragon Ball Zero. I said Zero first. <laughs> Dragon Ball Sparking Zero news, all that good stuff. Uh, we're gonna try to keep this uh, just just one way through, so we can kind of get this through and uh, just read everything. I kind of already went through a bit of this, so I'm kind of gonna be summarizing for you guys. Just giving a bit of, so you guys don't have to read word for word. So basically, um, the interviewer asks here, um, you know, the career path. That, what career path did you take before uh, becoming a producer uh, for this project? Yada yada. yada. Uh, he emphasizes that he worked uh, management for Dragon Ball Fighters, which is actually good intel to have. That lets us know that the competitive nature, or and or some of the uh, actual mechanics or things in Dragon Ball Sparky Zero, can be taken from fighters and i think we can see some of that stuff uh some of the actual inspiration can be taken from fighters as well so him being the manager there for, for one of the best dragon ball if not uh one of the best anime games uh of all time is actually good info to know that we are it's in good hands in terms of actually trying to pay attention to it he uh, this this game is a game for dragon ball fans but as a fan i hope it will also be a gateway to dragon ball so yeah and this one i actually read this too he's basically ex emphasizing that yeah sparking zero will be a way for people to actually get into the series but it's not going to be a way of like kakarot or anything like that um the world of dragon ball is is vast as he says here he, he wants us to know that the world of dragon ball is wide and even if you look at it purely as a fighting action game it is a game where you can enjoy a very speedy and deep strategy. So even if you are someone who only knows the name, we would be very happy if you would try this game and start to like the original work from there. So literally, they're honestly they're tailoring this this whole game to the original work. So they're trying to emphasize here that this is not just going to be a uh, game that you get to experience a perspective of the work. This is going to be a one-to-one -one retelling of either the story or the anime or whatever to give you the true feel of what it would be like to actually fight during those anime fights in the show and so in search of or in, is there a search as in search of is there a search fu um function for the custom battles i actually thought this is very neat so you can search in various different ways uh through tags difficulty level all that good stuff so i know certain games do it with like lobbies and stuff like that i'm not sure if they're going to be doing lobbies but you do get to actually search for um, your name, you know, names. They said it's going to have tags. So I feel like it's going to be something like maybe COD where you could put like a clan tag or whatever, something like that. I don't know. You said that there will be uh, unlockable of elements, but what do you mean? What do you imagine them to be? Well, you save points and purchase them. Um, So some elements can be unlocked by collecting points and some can be unlocked by clearing episode battles. So, um... Basically, this this is going to be a, a very simple system to unlock things. You collect points or you can clear battles. And the way you collect points could probably be through extra battles or completing some of the custom or and, and or extra battles that they have um, in the game. Um, custom battles is something I wanted to him wanted him to elaborate on. So no, um, it says, uh, is it possible to, to publish the scenario? Uh, the main focus is in the battle is so you can create the little a little scenario. Uh, conversely, you can choose not to set any um, lines. And just have the battles so it's not gonna be as vast as to say that you can like publish these scenarios in a like real game changing way or like you know in game scenarios but they're gonna be scenarios that you can kind of create little um additions to like we saw in the gameplay showcase you can actually they had like krillin versus frieza and stuff like that so i think that'd be a good way to actually um you know put in just a little bit of creation into the game and not have to always you know do cax or anything like that as a result, the battles may be a bonus and the scenarios may be the main focus. I don't know what will happen uh, after the release, but even if that happens, I think it's fine if people enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so the battles um, are like a bonus to the scenarios. Um, and so he does. they do emphasize that the scenario may be the focus. So the scenario can be like very focused to the point where like your health is low and all that good stuff or like you know you only have uh, a certain amount of time to defeat like stuff like that i think is where it's gonna shine really i think they want you guys to emphasize that part more so than 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 trying to like i guess create your own like sequence where i don't know you you're creating a different version of krillin and trying to fight you know it, it, i think they didn't want to make it too in-depth is the point 
Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, the custom battle, yada, 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 especially with the dialogue and editing, even though you can only use the set words. It seems like users will be able to slip through holes. We try to avoid that as much as possible, and we want everyone to treat Dragon Ball with love and laughs. However, depending on the situation, we think that the management management we will will have to be will have to deal with such cases. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. He's basically saying here like yeah. What if people try to put stuff in there that aren't like kid friendly and like you know basically so he's trying to emphasize guys you know just just keep it about love and laughs. And if anything happens like that, I can already see some situations where we might have to they might have to patch some things out because people are gonna just go crazy with it trying to do too too much shit uh, with it. Um, just all types of shit. So, at first glance, it looks like uh, it looks like you've just changed it to first-person perspective. But in reality, you have to create perks that don't ha need to be visible in in a normal movie scene. So it actually takes a lot of work, doesn't it? So I honestly am glad he shed some light on this because I don't really like the director's cut. Um, I think I'm one of the only ones. Probably don't really. I like the aspect. I like the idea. I like the execution behind it. But now that he's explained it, I don't. I rather 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 them not put it in there because it says here normally you can put p characters in impossible positions. However, since the direction requires switching between the normal camera position and the subjective viewpoint in real time, it was actually a very difficult challenge because of this. It was limited limited to a few scenes, so they weren't even able to. I thought it was going to be an option to switch back and forth throughout the entire story, but they can only do it for a few scenes. And so I would have rather them kind of like worked on it and react a little bit more if, if it was that hard. Um, because switching back and forth or like kind of getting different different perspective is cool. Unless they can, unless he means a few scenes in each character. Because I'm thinking right now, oh, so out of all the eight characters, we're only going to have like five or six scenes where we actually get a point of view. Whereas like it could be a few, a few point of view uh, cut scenes for each character. I don't know. We probably have to clarify that. Getting on down to further down in the interview, is that why you added a first-person perspective? Yeah, yeah, that's part of it. But uh, as a result, place of placing emphasis on a role-playing, on role-playing, we wanted people to um, experience what Goku was feeling at the time. So we added first-person perspective, which again is a great idea. I actually love the idea, but um, it could have been if it was just a few scenes. It could have been like more so like done spread out. I hope so. Um, so this is where we get into like the like nitty gritty of like what this series is all about, what this actually means for the Spark and Zero series. The episode battles also depict what if scenarios, but this uh, what is but was this adopted because um, it was so popular in Sparking series. Um, in Sparking Meteor, I'm sure there are were players who enjoyed the exciting uh, what if scenarios, wondering what would happen if uh, I could defeat a strong enemy enemy. Of course, reliving a story you already know is fun in itself, but for example, in this game, when you become able to control Goku well in the fight against Raditz and overcome the battle battle with a strong enemy and experience with a strong enemy, an experience you've never seen before awaits you. So they are literally trying to emphasize that they are putting all their all into these like what if things to the point where the first arc you can choose differently. Uh, will be picked in Raditz, Raditz arc to the tournament of power arc. The fact that characters such as Dragon Ball Super Zero will appear in DLC means that characters par participating are not limited to that, right? For example, the original Dragon Ball anime. So this interviewer, honestly, he 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 went for the jugular on this one, man. Uh, and I have to commend him for this because this just he's basically saying, bro. So you mean to tell me in between Dragon Ball and the Radix are in Tournament of Power, we're getting everything in between that? And so he can't even say this. He says, literally, I'm sorry, that also relates to characters, which he cannot really answer. So he cannot really answer questions on characters, which is why like things like Sean Kimmel releasing uh, or kind of quote unquote confirming um, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero's uh, Super Saiyan 4 was kind of crazy because they have not said anything about the other characters. You got people hanging on the game talking about these characters aren't going to be in there and they don't even, we don't even know how many characters are going to be in the game officially. Um, so he asks another character, another question about costumes. He said, I can't tell you about the characters, however, just like the previous games, there are going to be some characters who can change their costumes if they want to fight in this costume at this time. Uh, so for characters whose performance uh, doesn't change, yada, yada, this might happen or it might not. So, so he's literally kind of confirming, kind of not like he's asking questions about characters and costumes. So, he's basically saying there are no super versions, but there are super costumes, yada yada yada. Um, because you know it, it does mention enter Android 17 to Android 18 here. 
and the costume change depending on the situation. So yeah, he's literally being very, very peculiar about these uh peculiar or particular about these characters. And so uh, we get into the next one here. If you here, if you're familiar familiar with the series, you'll understand that the battles in uh, this are games. Our game, this game, are like let's play Dragon Ball. But I think that feeling is hard to convey to players, to new players. So exa that's exactly right. I want you to think of it's of it as a fighting action game where you can play Dragon Ball. I'm sure some fans have their own preferences. Like when this move comes out, you you should return it with this move, not avoid it. The appeal of this game is that you can perform these actions with your own hands as much as possible. So basically, he's saying that the you basically can control our player to the, to the extent that they want you to fully be able to deflect blasts, clash with blasts, clash with enemies, clash with you know. So they want you to fully be able to control the character in its entirety as if you were playing the anime. However, it is not a casual game. You can enjoy deep tactics as you uh, improve your skills. So again, they're emphasizing the aspect that, yeah, you can get in this and kind of have fun. It's not something that you have to literally learn right away, but you there are mechanics that you can dive deep into and learn to improve your skills. So while there, while there is a surface level to the game, there's definitely a level below it that other players are going to want to tap into. This series is a game where if you don't defend well, you often attack one-sidedly. I felt that introduction of a wrench counter made it um, easy easier to defend. That's true. But if anything, it's the result of emphasizing the action of Dragon Ball. In Dragon Ball, there are scenes where you can counterattack even after being attacked and land a counter. We introduced this new system based on an opinion that that's what Dragon Ball is about. Also, up until now, Kamehameha, Kamehameha, Kamehameha waves were not repelled in the game, but we thought that Dragon Ball is all about being able to bounce back Kam Kamehameha waves and so we created a system where you could prepare for various attacks and counter attack Kame Kamehameha waves such as ultimate blast such as the ultimate blast released in sparking state in sparking state cannot so it's called a sparking state cannot be bounced but this system will allow you to enjoy more Dragon Ball like arc action so basically there's a version of Kamehameha or a version of blast that can be counter attacked or uh, or just clash through but there's versions of them like the sparking version or ultimate version where they cannot be clashed through or can't probably can't even be countered um but if, uh, man, there are some new actions let's see, let's see when i tried that again i was very happy as a, that as a fan i felt that it was a very essence um of sparking there are some new actions such as short dashes but the basics seem to follow the feel of the series thank you i want you to enjoy the fun of sparking as it is so i tried to make a few changes as possible to the base system so yeah this is literally a copy and paste to the other games but my whole thing with this is this is definitely a rendition to the point where the content is definitely a different direction I'm re uh, relieved that the reaction was as I intended. On top of that, we've introduced systems such as revenge, count revenge counter and super identification to inc increase the range of tactics. The field is much larger than before, and we've added short dash to allow for more detailed actions. As the new elements, they are elements used in battles between advanced players, but we've added them to allow players to enjoy a deeper Dragon Ball battle experience. This is honestly, this is literally enough said about all of what he's saying um even though it branched out into rage and blast there was a gap between 17 years and feel that the perfection of sparking meteor was too high what is the actual situation we believe that sparking meteor is eventually extremely well made both in terms of range of action and number of characters such then the technology platforms and other aspects of the environment have evolved significantly over the years so we felt that if we made if we made the latest installment in sparking series in the current environment, it would surely surpass the previous installment. That is like A1 marketing, A1 uh, for, or foresight. Because literally, that's what everyone thought process was. Like, literally, you can't... What were you going to do with Budokai Tech IG4 back then? Come on, like, they made such an innovative game back then. What were you going to do? You got to wait for technology to, to catch up. And I feel like that's a, what a lot of people's problem is with gaming in general. We have to let technology catch up. We gotta let things catch up to the point where we could gather all the stuff that's new and then okay now we can redo this now we can get in doing a sequel as an action game i think the dragon ball raging blast series with a spiritual uh sequels to sparking judging from the title it's a sequel to sparking after all 
That's right. The Raging Blast series is a series that was made in a different direction from Sparking series. While inheriting the fun of action, we had heard from fans that they wanted to play a new Sparking series, so we decided to take on Sparking this time. So, like I said, they are going back to the original uh, way of doing things where it was the original Sparking Zero. And I had said this, but I want, again, I want us to stop really looking at this as a direct sequel. Obviously, they are marketing it as a direct sequel, and it is a complete copy and paste with base system with new things revamped. But look at it as like a Xenoverse 2 revamp. That's basically what this is. And so, although it is a, that's not technically a sequel to Xenoverse 2, because again, it is modded, but it is a, d definitely a, a, an addition to the seek, uh, to the series, just like Raisin Blast was. Is it taking a new direction? Not quite, but it is starting over in the sense like, this is going to be Sparking Zero, the next game is going to be Sparking, the next game is going to be Sparking 2, Sparking 3. It's not going to be Budokai Tenkaichi 5, Budokai Tenkaichi 6, you know what I'm saying? I don't think they're going in that direction. Dragon Ball has a very wide fan base, including the generation that was directly affected by the original manga, the generation that was born with Dragon Ball Kai, yes, me, <laughs> and the generation that grew up with the recent Dragon Ball Super. On the other hand, there is also a generation that is not very familiar with Dragon Ball from the perspective of the game. What do you think about the fan, fan base? If you like any of the Dragon Ball games, you aim we aim to make it enjoyable. Sparking Meteor was released about 10, 17 years ago, and I think it was mainly aimed at a generation that was first exposed to the original manga and watched Dragon Ball Z. I think players of that generation can get into this game as it is, and fans of, Dra fans of Dragon Ball Super will also enjoy it as there are characters of that series. Extra questions. In episode battle movies, you can enjoy some scenes and blah, blah. It will be from the perspective of the main character chosen in the episode battle. So there may be others besides Goku. However, we cannot reveal who the other main characters are. So please wait for further information to find out who is perfected. You will be able to see how many movie scenes will be. Will there be? This is a mode for enjoying battle. So it is limited to some scenes. Okay. Is it um, possible to follow the story of Dragon Ball Super in this game? I think you can follow follow the flow of the story but it unfolds as if some scenes were cut out rather than being able to enjoy the story from 1 to 10 the de details are digested and you get to relive the surroundings of each battle so I like so basically ended off with what I was saying they are completely completely trying to emphasize that yeah this is not going to be such a uh a what you call it story mode type of game one-to-one -one, but they are going to tell the story and they are going to tell it in a way that that makes you makes it digestible but the focus is to get you into the fight and get you feeling like you're playing dragon ball into the fight we have so many games where it's like cutscene 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 kakarai xenoverse it's cutscene 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 at a cutscene trying to make us feel like we're in an episode instead of trying to make us feel like we're battling you know so i really appreciate this interview if you guys have any questions or any any comments or anything that you've seen here that you want to elaborate on or give your thoughts on leave a uh leave it in the comment section section down below uh this will probably be probably or more than likely be my last video uh, before I go out of the country guys, I really appreciate the support and all the good stuff that you guys have been showing me I'm gonna be uh, posting some videos and getting some videos out there for the next couple of weeks So again, I appreciate you guys and I hope you guys leave a like on this video Subscribe if you're new and get on some more sparking zero content Peace